Hello everyone, possible subscribers or just casual listener, doesn't matter to me. Today I will be reading you a My Little Pony fan fiction. That's right, deal with it. Anyways, this is the first, I'll probably do more, honestly. If I get, if people, if you guys like it, I'll, I'll do more. So, I was just kind of, oh, whoa, it's really quiet, hold on, whoa, there, that looks like it's better. Anywho, I was looking around on Equestria Daily for a nice little song, not song, fan fiction to read, and I found one. So, I will have a link for it in the description. It is called Solar Flare. What is it about, you may ask? Well, listen on. And I will try my hardest to do voices for the characters, but I can't promise anything because if you can tell my voice is kind of deep and I can't really do high-pitched girl voices without sounding terrible so yeah wow I've already dragged this on for a minute all right time to get started solar flare a survivor's eyewitness account of the war of the night written by drag griffin <coughs> <laughs> wow, that was terrible. Anyway, okay. This text is a gift to my wonderful daughters. May it record your many happy memories, and even the sad ones, so that if you may ever need it, ever read it, the happier ones will seem that much more so. I have imbued this tome with powerful magic. No ink will ever touch its pages. No quill ever scratch against them. It will record by itself your histories, your achievements, your love for each other. May your years of service to our nation of Equestria be the best of the best it has ever had. Your mother and I will not be long upon this earth, just as our ancestors left for the higher plane, so shall we. In our place, we leave you our kingdom, our livelihood, our lives. May you bring, may you bring long, long-lasting prosperity to your home. Long live the daughters of Equestria. Ooh, that was a cool little intro. All right. A brief bit of knowledge about the race of Alicorns. The earth can only support a minuscule amount at one time. They are gods within their own right, beings. Beings not from the mortal plane of existence. Their home plane is all but a mystery. Usually there are upwards of only four or five, and always at least two. One for the day, and one for the night. It has been this way for millennia. They are the rulers of all pony kind. But for only a few thousand years did they rule before they ascend, leaving behind a new duo to take their place. This history begins with the previous ruler's extension, and the new ruler's rise to power. Let's begin the histories of Celestia and Luna. Ho oh, ho, here we go. Okay. Oh god, this voice is gonna be terrible. Luna! Luna! <laughs> Yelled Celestia as she burst into her little sister's quarters. The pink maned, white alicorn, white coated alicorn was panting heavily from sprinting. It was nearly time for the extension, and Luna was probably hiding like a filly again. Scanning Luna's bedroom, nothing appeared to be out of place. It was decorated in dark colors, blues, violets, and blacks adorned every surface. The Pegasus down badly. The Pegasus down badly made. The floor's woven carpet was clear, and even the desk lay neatly organized. Luna's selection of quills were arranged nicely in a row, and her parchment was stacked, ready to use. The ink plot was plugged with a cork to prevent it from drying out, and Luna's prized abacus had been reset and was ready to use. Celestia cocked her ears, thinking she had caught a small sound. Moving further into the room, she proceeded towards the back, where a lavish washroom, where a lavish washroom was located. Peering within, she saw her sister facing the large mirror upon the wall. Sniffling and giving tiny sobs. Sighing, she walked into the tiled room and lay her neck over her young, younger siblings in a hug. Come, Luna. If we're too late, we'll miss the extension, and we'll never get to say our last goodbye. You know we can't stop it or delay it from happening. Luna leaned into the hug and gave a large sniff, wiping the tears from her eyes with the hoof. I know, Sally, but I don't want Mother and Father to leave. I don't even know if I'm ready to assume the duties of the night. I know, dear sister. I don't wish them to lie leave either. But we can't stop this. They said they'd been called back, and that is our turn to rule. I'm scared too, but we must go. We'll only know regret if they leave without us there. Come, come, leaning down. Celestia pushed her nose against Luna's flank, despite her sti- sister's sub- <laughs> Sorry. Despite her sister's stubbornness to stay sat. That was a tongue twister. Then an idea hit her, and a mischievous grin spread across her face. I'll tickle you again. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Celestia flapped a foreleg around Luna and tickled a hoof tip against her belly, 
eliciting a shriek of surprise from his sister. No, this is not a clop fic. It may seem like it's going that way, but it's not. It's a sad one. So, you know. <laughs> Luna sprang up with a playful no and darted off. Celestia pursuing her out of the room and into the corridors, already feeling in a better mood. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. And when I do, I'm going to pin you down and tickle you without mercy. <laughs> Luna, her eyes already dry and giggled and put on more speed. She was slower than her sister, but she knew how Sully always hung back a bit, just to give her a fighting chance. <laughs> you have to catch me first before I get to mom and dad. Their parents were base, or Luna was safe until the game began again. We need to find them first, silly, and by the time you do, I'll have caught you, Celestia exclaimed, half a pony length behind her sister. She stretched her neck out and nosed against Luna's flank, another playful shriek coming from her in response. Let's hope this keeps my <laughs> let's hope this keeps my sister's mind off things and gets her to mother and father before they go. Luna turned her head and stuck her tongue out at Celestia before taking a sharp turn down another corridor, bursting in through a couple open doors into Everfree Castle's audience chambers. The throne at the top contained two more Algoans. Their parents, Queen Sol and King Al uh, Altair. I'm just going to I'm just going to call him Altair of Equestria. One was rose in color, with a gently sloping nose and a pair of bright green eyes, while the other, a charcoal gray, had a sturdier build of body, and his crimson eyes seemed to pierce through anything that they stared at. Luna ran up the steps to the throne and planted a hoof against her mother's flank, looking back at Celestia with a wide grin. I win! <laughs> Celestia herself galloped up next to her, her father and stuck her tongue out of Luna, to the bemusement of both of the parents. Oh god, how am I going to do a regal queen voice? Okay, prepare to be cringe. Cringe at this. My ch <laughs> I'm sorry. My children, we have guests. There, that's better than I was going to do. Queen Sol abdomished their daughters, causing the two fillies to start and hide behind the two elder Alicorn. Beyond the throne, an entire crowd of ponies of all types and sizes lay watching. Few were even giggling at the sisters' antics. While they just rolled their eyes. King Altair leaned down and gave Celestia a brief nuzzle of affection. To our sides, my wonderful daughters, the ceremony begins. Yeah, that's a terrible voice, too. Gotta to stop interrupting, I'm sorry. The two Elgorn fillies immediately switched places as they practiced Luna at Altair's flank and Celestia at her mother's. Raising their heads to the sky, the ruler's horns began to emit vibrant light. Altair's in an inky black and souls a pure, bright white. All at once, light began to flood the chambers from the skylights, as if an immense light source had appeared directly overhead. Outside the skylights, the sky was deep blue. Not a thing within it. No clouds, no birds, not even the occasional pegasus. As the light began to focus upon the throne, all of the alcorn sat up straighter. And let's see, eight minutes? Okay, I will have to stop it at there. At a cliffhanger. I'm sorry, I wish I could go longer, but, you know, it then... YouTube is odd, and it would cause me to have to wait eight hours or something ridiculous to upload this. So, we will stop right there and continue later on. Thank you for listening, and I hope my smooth voice of sexy incarnate didn't put you to sleep. <laughs> Goodbye. See you next time.